Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and the MCU mutants have arrived with Kamala Khan established as the first mutant that we know about in the 616 MCU in the Ms. Marvel finale. Kamala, there's something different in your genes, like a mutation. Whatever it is, it's just gonna be another label. Yeah, just a label. Good luck with that, kid. You got the 90s X-Men animated theme needle drop stamp of approval. Beyond the matter of this being a retcon from Kamala Khan being an inhuman in the comics, this finally shows to us Marvel Studios' hand when it comes to their long-planned mutant rollout in the MCU. So what does Kamala being a mutant mean for future Marvel introductions in the MCU? If Kamala can have a mutant gene, who else does? How does this all work? Also, how does Bruno know all this? Like, is there a section on the Caltech application requiring genetic profiles of your crushes, but I needed to know for science. And this video was sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. We'll give you some more information on them in a moment. Bringing in the mutants is something Marvel Studios has been able to do since Disney acquired the film rights to the X-Men from Fox in 2018 and Kevin Feige's TZ announcement back at Comic-Con 2019. There's no time left to talk about mutants and how mutants and notice how Feige said mutants there, not X-Men, meaning that they always plan for something more organic for the genesis of mutants in this universe, as opposed to a major multiversal crossover of major stars from the X-Men Fox franchise. It's not gonna be so much about people who are aligned with the X-Men, but rather the personal stories of people who just happen to have that genetic profile. So Kamala Khan actually makes the third mutant tease in Marvel Phase 4, after the Evan Peters fake out as Pietro, aka Ralph Boner in WandaVision, and the Patrick Stewart Charles Xavier cameo in Multiverse of Magic but really only the second to receive the 90s X-Men riffs, so they're the only ones that matter. Though I have theorized that Ralph could return in Wonder Man, so don't count him out. Charles Xavier's cameo represented one mutant path that we've long theorized, multiversal crossover. In this plan, beloved actors who we already know who played mutants in the past to X-Men titles could just join the MCU via some incursion. Like when Reed Richards babbled on about incursions and Multiverse of Madness as a whole seemed to be setting up the Avengers Secret Wars crossover event, it seemed at least possible that known X-Men stars from Universe 838 and beyond could be established as the X-Men in the 616 universe alongside the other Avengers. Of course, Multiverse of Madness proved that those cameos were really just added to the movie as fan service lives to the cosmic slaughter! And now Kamala Khan's mutant designation implies a different path that we've talked about, a more grassroots genetic approach that the MCU could just establish that the mutant gene already exists in a number of individuals throughout the 616 universe, but was simply dormant until now or just unseen in the storylines we focused on until this point. And in this path, the famous mutant characters we know would likely be recast as MCU variants, which we have endlessly fancast on this channel. Now, if you've watched our videos before, you probably already know how much we love Raid. It's got global PvP, massive PvE boss battles, and over 600 champions that you can choose from. But today, we're gonna talk about one of those badass bosses you get to fight because they are my favorite part of the game. And today's boss, I'm gonna gush about Bommel the Dreadhorn. He is a lava rhino who loves bombs. It's like somebody reached into the part of my brain labeled awesome things, yanked Bommel the Dreadhorn into existence, and then put him into this game. So I get to feel even more awesome by beating him up using his own bombs. Bombing Bommel the bomb-ass bomb rhino? <laughs> yes, please. Raid never gets old for me because there is always something new to do, and this month, beyond adding five new champions to choose from and overhauling the champion vault, Raid's running a ton of summer splash events. That means new skins for everyone's favorite hammer swinging dwarf, trying to get Mallet. Also, you can get Deliana, a brand new champion from the high elves faction, all you gotta do is log on and play Raid for seven days between now and July 28th. If you're a new player, use promo code MYDELIANA and you'll also get 50 XP brews so that you can get Deliana up to max level and start kicking butt right away. There's never been a better time to get started with Raid and if you click the link in the description or use our QR code, you can get $30 worth of unique bonuses. This means a Rector Draft, that's a free epic champion, 200,000 silver, one energy refill, one XP boost, and one ancient shard so that you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in game. All of these treasures will be waiting for you right here. Just head to your inbox once you get in and you'll be ready to raid. But for now, Marvel Studios seems to be walking both paths because Ryan Reynolds, Deadpool, is confirmed to join the MCU, playing the same version of himself, we think, from his 2016 film and 2018 film, which were more linked to the Fox X-Men continuity. And that would suggest that he's gonna join the MCU as a result of some kind of incursion event, like what Reed warned about, or maybe in Secret Wars or on the other side of Secret Wars. Deadpool's always been an interesting one because he's always been kind of a Bugs Bunny meta figure. Now to clarify something about how multiversal variants work, at least in the eyes of the MCU brass. Marvel producer Richie Palmer explained that the MCU 
issue has uh, some kind of varying logic for whether multiversal variants are played by the same actor or by different ones, suggesting characters like Doctor Strange and Wanda Maximoff are really more fixed, egocentric souls in which all of their variants look the same. Whereas characters like Loki are, by their nature, agents of chaos who shapeshift and take alternate forms, thus Loki's variants looking like Tom Hiddleston in some instances, but also like other actors and other animals. Characters like Peter Parker are different actors because the early 2000s comics established multiversal Spider-Man as really a diverse spectrum of variants. That the whole journey of Peter Parker is to meet Spider-Man who looked nothing like him. But getting back to Kamala Khan being a mutant, Marvel now firmly plants a flag in the option to activate mutants genetically within their population, setting up a kind of guessing game for fans in which, like with the scrolls, any enhanced individual we meet or already know may have their powers as a result of a genetic precondition called the mutant gene or the X gene. Ms. Marvel's head writer confirmed that making Kamala a mutant wasn't always the plan, but they introduced it as a way to explain why only Kamala, not anyone in her family descending from the Nord dimension, only Kamala would get powers when putting on that bangle. They needed to make her specifically different in some way. And you can read about how this decision led to a humorous email exchange between Iman Vellani and Kevin Feige. Now, we're still left a little fuzzy on why Kamala needs to be a mutant, however. Like in avoiding the inhuman Terra Genesis backstory, the Disney Plus series tried to explain Kamala's powers with three fantastical sources. Hard light from the Nord dimension, alien technology of the bangle, and now Kamala's unique mutant gene. Remember, in the Marvel comics, the mutant gene is something all mutants are born with and activates at a young age, most of the time through puberty or through trauma, in some cases, uh, weird experimentation or energy exposure. But in the MCU, so far, organic mutants require three components. A mutant gene, a source unique to that person's personal history, and a situational trigger. So if we use Kamala as a rule here, think of her mutant gene as a lock mechanism. Her ancestral Nord dimension was the source on the other side of that locked door, and the trigger key for her was the bangle. To compare this to another mutant, Cyclops, Scott Summers, the lock mechanism was his mutant gene, the key was puberty, and the source of his awesome ruby-colored optic blasts is actually a dimension of pure energy to which Scott's eyes open small interdimensional portals. If you didn't know that about Cyclops, that is actually how Cyclops fires those. Now, how does this work for Wanda Maximoff? In the comics, she is known to be a mutant, not sure yet in the MCU, but she has been called Enhanced, and going by the DODC and Ms. Marvel calling characters Enhanced who ended up being mutants, it is possible, and I'd even say likely, that the MCU will go in that direction for Wanda and for her kids, Billy and Tommy, who end up becoming the mutants Wiccan and Speed in the comics. I think Wanda's trigger was the trauma of that Stark warhead, because she was first able then to actively cast low-level hexes to keep it from exploding. The source, I think, was Cthon's dark magic, his curse. That, I think, is what ordained Wanda to become the Scarlet Witch. And of course, her mutant gene was the lock mechanism that made this all connect. Now, Wanda also had an additional trigger of a boost of Infinity Stone radiation from Hydra, and that's what I think elevated her to the Nexus Bean status, because it was in that moment that she saw her future. This might also explain why 838 Billy and Tommy don't have powers, because they have the genetic profile and the source, but not yet a trigger. They haven't really yet come of age or been fully traumatized. They almost did, and maybe they did in that moment. The 616 Scarlet Witch scared the hell out of them, and maybe that's something for the future of these kids, but we didn't see them yet in this moment have those powers. But if we compare them to Billy and Tommy within the Hex and WandaVision, those were manifestations of Wanda, empowered by the same trigger of Wanda's own trauma and her grief. So really, this is just my best explanation of how mutant kind will work in the MCU, but I'm gonna throw it to you. What do you think of this idea of three components being necessary? Is it too confusing? And if anybody from Marvel Studios is watching and just wants to claim that as their idea, go for it. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Voss. Follow New Rockstar, subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching, bye.